McGraw-Millhaven on KTRS. Well, the Ellisville City Council was uh, voted in. Uh, the Adam Paul slate got two. The other one, Poole, she was reelected, though she's taking a wait-and-see approach on the impeachment. That impeachment trial continues starting at 1 o'clock today. Jane Cunningham, she beat Cole McNary for that Monarch Arch, or for the Monarch uh, Fire District. And the other big one was the Arch Tax. That passed both in the city and in the county. To talk about it is the man who's been covering this from the very beginning from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch from stltoday.com, David Hunt. David, thanks for joining us. Good to, ha- good to be here. Uh, late night for you last night. <laughs> Election nights are always fun and always late. You were at uh, Forest Park last, last night watching the returns? No, actually, with the new world, you know, we're posting stuff every 10 minutes online. So I was at the main office on Tucker. Um, just constantly getting election results and constantly putting them up line. I probably uh, wrote 10 stories last night. Uh, okay, so um, we know that the city passed 66%. That wasn't that surprising. I was somewhat surprised the county was a little closer than I thought it was going to be. Right, so there was a moment where the county was showing 51-49. And, every, you know, I, I kind of thought, I mean, this was a pretty slick operation again, this campaign. And right. I, I thought that uh, there could be you know, something for them to worry about. And then suddenly it jumped back up and ended up passing, what, uh, 53, 47, something right, like yeah, that? Yeah, that was the last I saw. Yeah, and, uh, it, you know, that shows, I mean, they had a very specific strategy, you know, go out, find the people who are going to vote yes, um, uh, find the people who vote all the time, get those people to the polls. And uh, it seems seems like it worked. They, they had, if there is still left, the St. Louis community of, Highfalutins. I mean, civic progress was behind it. They had almost every single charitable organization behind it. Every single business a million dollars in business money. Right. right. Yeah. I mean, they had the St. Louis. I want. I don't. I don't want to call it old money, but that St. Louis traditional value there promoting this. Yeah, for sure. The. I mean, civic progress gave several donations of hundreds of thousands of dollars each, and this and civic progress, of course, is all the top CEOs. In the, in the area. So they were totally behind it. The question really was, what was going to happen in all the munis to bring out voters? So, for instance, um, an example just given to me, Ellisville, uh, the, the city council race. Right. You know, so they have some mayoral conflict. Lots of voters came out. Well, is a, is a voter coming out to vote for city council in Ellisville going to vote for the arch tax? Uh, you know. Right. Maybe, maybe not. Right. Um, yeah. so, so that was the... Uh, that was what they were facing, and they knew that, um, and that's why they targeted voters they thought would vote for it and they knew would vote. The opposition, while David Stokes from the Show Me Institute w- was opposed to it and some others, there wasn't any um, – uh, there wasn't any uh... – So op- opposition organized but late. So so we saw critics kind of build over time. Right. You know, at the beginning – we really didn't hear much from anybody. Uh, you know, some aldermen were upset about the design of the arch, but that was all. That was really the main criticism. And then over time, you saw this opposition build. Um, St. Louis County Republicans came in, okay. and then uh, one of their committee women uh, or helped organize a group that brought out prop. You know, no on prop P signs and right. stuff like that. But it was too little, too late. In other it, words, definitely too little, too late, and and really, um, I, I think too little. More than anything, I mean, they just didn't get enough people together. Right. Yeah. So, so, uh, and those politicos know exactly what districts are coming in at what time, and they know that this one's not in yet. But we're not worried about that. I mean, they have this down to a science. I mean, the folks who know elections in this town better than anybody, guys like Peter Sortino right. and Richard Callow. I mean, all these folks were, you know, e- either behind it or in support. Peter Peter Sortino is the guy who's run campaigns for Forest Park Forever and stuff like that. I mean, he really knows his stuff. You know, you got to really be an organized opposition, right? Or have a, a, the the right, um, yeah. You know, you uh, got to have right. No, but but there was. You're absolutely right. I mean, to go up against Peter Sortino and C- Civic Progress and everybody else, yep. you really need uh, not only a great message but a concentrated effort as well. Right. Yeah. Interesting. All right. So going forward, uh, what what happens now? Yeah. So this is. I mean, we have to remember that the the tax doesn't get start collected tomorrow, right? It it takes a quarter. Um, and then in the next quarter, it starts to be collected. Okay. So we're talking about collecting the tax in August. All right. Um, m- m- they'll wait another quarter, 
before they disperse it. So they'll they won't pass that money out until fall. Okay. And then uh it'll be you know, Great Rivers Greenway, the organizations that that's actually gonna take the money. Um, you know, so again, forty percent goes to county and city parks, right? Thirty percent goes to the Arch Grounds renovations, thirty percent goes to trails. Great Rivers Greenway, the trails organization, is gonna get that thirty percent and use it for their own staff to build trails. So so they've got to hire people. Uh, uh, and I, I just talked to Susan Troutman a second ago, the executive director there, and she's like, man, do not send me applications now. <laughs> like, they are not, you know, they are not ready. So it, it's going to be a little, and you know, for the first part, she doesn't have any money yet. Right. So the money's not coming in. She can't hire anybody yet. So it's going to be a little bit before that happens. Yeah. Um, but eventually they'll need some project managers to start because they're going to double their budget. That means they're going to, you know, ostensibly double the amount of trails they can build. Right. Not quite, probably. You wrote a couple of great stories about that organization. That's a great organization. Literally started out of somebody's basement. So the the uh, the people who love Great Rivers Greenway love Great Rivers Greenway, and the, and you you find a lot and and pol- you know politicians say it is a um, example of government done right. Uh, you do have a few people who don't like it, and they're mostly folks who have problems with specific trails. So, you know, uh, I gave an example Monday. There, a, a woman is really worried about a trail running through Emmenegger natu- uh, right. Nature Park because it's it's so, it's kind of, you know, it's pretty right there. Right. And she doesn't want a big trail going through it. So that's the people who don't like it. Uh, so flip to the arch grounds for a second. Um, the arch, you know, again, those projects, so you got some projects starting there. You got 30% of the money, the, the new money coming in for them. Uh they have to figure out how they're going to go out for bonds. Um, you know, are they going to do it in series? Are they going to get all the? Are they going to sell bonds and get all the money at once? We're talking a year before that's done. Right. Uh, when will it all be completed? Well, the arch is supposed to be finished by 2015. 2015. That's their. I mean, that's their. That's their name, City Arch River 2015. Okay. <laughs> now, it, whether or not they can finish, I mean, they are certain they can finish it. I have no reason to say they can't. It, that's a lot of work to get done really fast. Right. So there's going to be a lot of construction going on downtown. You, you're going to have uh, Ballpark Village, which is already being chewed up. Yeah. And then you have the arch yep. with the lid, which is already going on. And, and So the lid construction starts this summer. Right. That means Memorial Drive closes this summer. For good. Right, for, right, for good. Right there next to the arch. Yeah. So yeah. I'd say watch out for construction traffic, but it won't matter because Memorial Drive will already be closed. <laughs> uh, it's pretty exciting. Uh, I know a lot of people are excited about this. So this is really fascinating to me. I want. So I make a point of going out and talking to election folks, to, to voters, right. on the day of elections. And so many. I drove from Maplewood to Ellisville on Manchester and stopped at five or six different polling places. And my what I was surprised by was how many people from the county were excited about the Arch Grounds renovations. So many. Right. Frank Opinion was talking about this yesterday. How many people haven't been to the Arch? Or how many St. Louisans haven't been to the Arch, and how long has it been since we've all been to the Arch? It's a good point. Might actually, We might actually embrace it more now yeah. ourselves. One, one of the guys I talked to said he called it a uh, drive-by monument. Yeah, that's a good point. Said sometimes you get out and take a picture. That's sometimes a, you don't. That's a great point, everyone. I mean, but you just cannot deny the majestic beauty that thing brings. Yeah, uh, Metcalf, the guy who runs City Arch River, says it is one of the, um, you know, great pieces of public art in the world. No question, no question. And it's right here in our own back back backyard. David Hun, what's what's next for you? What's what's the next beat for you? Uh, well, I mean, I'm still working on uh, Zoo Museum District stuff. Uh, you know, the History Museum stuff isn't finished yet. Um, that's going to be interesting. Uh, those guys are struggling with how they govern their the History Museum. Right. Um, I, I think that the, the bonding for the City Arch River ta- uh, bond measure is going to be fascinating. All right. Um, so I'm going to watch that closely. You know, the, the critics for uh, Great Rivers Greenway and City Arch River say you have to watch that money. Close. It's a public-private partnership, right. and you got to watch that money going from Great Rivers to City Arch River. And I think they're right. We have to watch that stuff closely. You'll be watching for us, and you'll come back anytime we ask? And Absolutely. You got it. David Hunt, thanks for check, checking in. Happy to be here. David Hunt with the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Uh, great work on the uh, arch tax, and, of course, the pass last night, both the city and the county. So that money will start flowing, as he said, in the next uh, six months or so. 921 here on the Big 550 KT.